Yo, I got a tatted on my forearm. Uh, it reminds me to go hard. So, so if any anybody tried to bogart, <laughs> yeah. they're so scarred. Let's take, take it, it to the boulevard, boulevard, the streets, the avenue. Uh -huh. Hop, hop, it's Pete. Al fool, MR to the creeps in the bow fool. Yes, no stops on my way to the top. Come on. Uh. Hey, hey. How's it going, man? How are you? Ooh, man. man, I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm the dream, brother. I'm I'm man, dream. I see it. I see it. I listen to it. I've been, uh, I immersed myself in the experience and wow, wow, <laughs> it was a trip. I, 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 I appreciate that. That, that, that means a lot. Yeah, man, it was a trip. And and coming from my, I'm an audio engineer. Oh, okay. So I went to Full Circle University and uh, just realized not too long ago that Corey went there as well. So we're both alum. But uh, from one uh, audio engineer, I don't know if you're one yourself because the quality of sound on that, podcast and the foley is is crazy uh, i i am not i i i am not uh i uh everything i learned is just trial trial by fire uh I, and i'm pretty sure there's some stuff that could be tightened up because because i'm not an audio engineer and stuff like that uh but a lot of it is just you know um just trying stuff and trying stuff you know what i mean so, you know that's what i love about this space you know you get to just try stuff and when it hits and it clicks is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. No, look, just, just thank you for being on the no, show. I, I'm honored, sir. I'm honored. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So the way, you know, we start the show and we, we do this live on Instagram because, you know, try to spread the message as much as, much as possible. And okay. recently I've just started just interviewing other podcasters because okay. there's so much out there that I don't even know about. And I'm learning every day, you know, especially your podcast which was different. It was, it was, it was something I haven't really listened to before, you know, our stories. Right. And, uh, my, my wife always reminds me of podcasting when she says it, it reminds her of, uh, of, uh, old time radio where yeah. they will, you know, give you the, the, the movie or the story on the radio and back then how they listened. Mm -hmm. And my wife was into that when she was younger. And I'm like, man, when I was younger, that was not my thing. I was a TV guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. But as I got right. old and I'm podcasting and I'm listening to these podcasts, I'm like, wow, man, the imagination is, is, is outrageous. That's the thing, man, about, about this space, man. You're, you're only limited by your imagination. You know what I mean? And, and so and, and I know we'll probably get into it, but like sometimes, man, like when I, when I, when I think about who I'm going to highlight on, on Black is America, uh, if I, I'm reading the story, reading the research, the preliminary stuff, right? If I start writing the episode in my head, I know I'm going to do it. Like that's that's when I know. Like yeah, this, this is I can I can do something with this. I can do something real nice with this. Nice, nice, it's nice. Well, I, I would love for you to introduce yourself to our listeners. Uh, besides just going live, I actually take these and turn them into uh, actual audio podcast, video podcast. But I do them here because you know whoever wants to hop on gets to see it take place live and. You know, and but I, I still put it out, and I get my listens and my views from there as well. So if you Absolutely. could let them know your name, the name of your podcast, and how they can find you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Please. Uh, uh, no, for sure. My name is Dominic Lawson. I'm an award-winning podcaster. I'm the host of the award-winning Black is America uh, podcast. Uh, you can find it on any of your uh, favorite platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Play, things of that nature. Uh, you can also uh, check out the website as well, blackisamericapodcast.com. Yes, check it out. You got, got to listen to it. It is phenomenal. Nine-time award winner. I love that. My goal is for my goal is to get some trophies. You know, uh, I've been in this space for a while, and I thought I was out here by myself. As I'm talking about, as a brown person, you right. know, and I'm like, where are we at? And then one day I just started researching online. I found Corey at the Black Podcast Association. Mm -hmm. And ever since I found him, I've been just wowed. You know what I mean? To have you all in this space and know you guys and hear what you guys are doing and see what you guys are doing. It's really been uh, motivating me. So uh, I think I like what you told Corey one day. I need you to succeed. And I'm going to tell you that, too. I need you to succeed. So uh, I can also get some of these accolades because now I'm putting my name in a hat. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I, I think we all should. You know, when we when we think about this space and, 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 and podcasters of color, uh, there's some barriers there. Mm. Uh, and, and so let, let's just, you know, be honest, there's some barriers there. Uh, and, and so with the BPA and what they do, uh, Black uh, Podcasters Association and, and Corey and stuff like that, they do a phenomenal job of not just putting, putting us together and, 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 and breaking down that isolation of feeling like we're just in these silos, like, you know, you are where you are, I'm, I'm at where I'm at. And so bringing us together, it really does build that community. Uh, but also what he does in, in, in bringing resources uh, to the organization and stuff like that, you know what I mean? From the speakers to the courses, to the book club and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's really important for our community to have that, that resource. It is. So, uh, no, I, I, you know, and, and I want to give kudos to you, man. I've been checking out some of your work as well. I, I checked out the last episode, stuff like that. You do really phenomenal work, brother. I just want to make sure. You know, iron sharpens iron around here. You know uh, what I mean. So I want to make sure I give you your make sure I give you your flowers today, sir. I appreciate that, man. It's been hard work. We started from <laughs> we started from four guys at a poker table man, to listen. here. It, it's been a, a hell of a journey. I've had a good time. I hear that. You know, I, I always tell people I, I I started in the closet. You know what I mean. Started in the closet, just trying to you know uh, figure out some stuff. And, and, the, and the funny thing is, with everything that I've done, I still record in the closet. Wow. <laughs> I still record in the closet. Like I, I do have a studio in Nashville that I go to and um and uh and record from all the time because I my employer and we're probably getting to that a little bit. Uh but man, I, I still appreciate recording in the closet. You know what I mean? Just kind of me with my thoughts and stuff like that and, and writing and stuff like that. So uh it's 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 pretty cool. It's pretty cool. This thing we call podcast is pretty damn cool. It is cool. It's cool. <laughs> and you are a podcaster. Oh uh, uh, uh. And we're just, you know, chopping it up, and we'll ask questions. If you want to bring something sure. up, please bring it up. I, you know, I dived into everything, so I got so much in my head, and we're just going to just spew it all out. But okay. uh, you do – you're a podcaster. That's what you do daily uh, mm -hmm. for mental health, for your own podcast. Uh, you're, hot, you're employed as a podcaster as yeah. well. How did that all come about? Um, so – this is where the origin story comes in, right? Yeah, uh, so yeah. basically, uh, I started podcasting just by myself, freelancing in 2016, November 2016. Uh, it was a birthday present to myself to start podcasting because I started November 1st. My birthday's on November 6th. Uh, and so honestly, I just, just, I just I had a show called The Startup Life where we talk to entrepreneurs and, and business-minded professionals and stuff like that. Uh, and, and just building, man, you know, the days where, you know, people wouldn't come on the show you know, or people would come on the show and they wouldn't act right. You you know how this goes. I know how it goes. You know, you know how this goes, right? Uh, but uh, I started getting some traction when um, uh, people started reaching out to me, like people who were had uh, uh, business, like they had clients where they're like, hey, my client is looking for somebody to come on the show, come on a business show. Uh, you know, would you be willing to have them? Like, sure, no problem. And so it just kind of grew from there. And then the game changer, I always share this story. The game changer is when I booked the co-founder of Netflix. Yeah. I booked the co-founder founder of Netflix. Everything changed from there. And so that's when I started to really make a name for myself in the business podcast community. Uh, and, you know, and start, you know, had him on, uh, the founder of Paychex, the, uh, the uh, chief legal officer of Airbnb, the chief marketing officer of uh, MasterCard, the founder of Dunkin' Donuts. Wow. And so it just kind of, it just kind of blossomed from there. And so the Meadows, Meadows Behavioral Healthcare, they saw what I was doing and they say, hey, you know, we see what you're doing with the startup life, you know, grassroot from, you know, built from nothing. Would you be willing to do that for us? Wow. And I was like, okay. So they, they, they it was, it was crazy, man. So they put me and the family up, Santi, in, in this really nice hotel. And I was like, man, I, you know, this is all from podcasting. Wow. That's what we're doing out here in these streets. Wow. And so they put us up in this nice hotel and, and, uh, and, and they took me out to lunch and they, they, and, and you know, you've been on an interview where it's like, where the conversation goes from you just kind of telling, you know, telling them about yourself to them trying to sell you on the job. Yeah. And yeah. that's what it turned into. And, uh, you know, I said, okay, we're going to talk this and the other. And I said, okay, Kenda, this is my number. My, my, my wife uh, name is Kenda. And so we were talking about salary and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, Kenda, uh, this is the number, and if they if they hit this number, I'm gonna take it. I'm, I'm gonna take go. it, no problem. Uh, but if they say they don't want me, like, look, just to be wined and dined and courted like this from podcasting, they don't owe me nothing. Nice. And, and 
Santi, man, they came back with the number $20,000 more Ooh. than than what I had in mind. And God so is I good. was like, I, I guess, guess this is happening. That's like, I guess right. I'm a full-fledged professional, you know, podcaster. And so uh, the name of the company, Meadows Behavioral Healthcare, phenomenal company, love the work. Uh, you know, talking about mental health, people, you know, addiction, trauma, stuff like that. It's very important. Work, oh, yeah. Very important work. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, because, well, you know, especially due to the pandemic and even before that, but definitely the pandemic exacerbated some things. Uh, and so doing that work, telling those stories of recovery mm -hmm. of people uh, coming from the abyss, coming from the, the darkness, if you will, yeah. uh, and, and turning it around, man, those stories fire me up. I, yeah. I really do. Like, I'm so proud of the people that we talk to and also the clinicians as well. And mm -hmm. that's kind of how it happened, man. I, I like to say they plucked me out of obscurity wow. uh, from from the closet, man. And, and so, uh, so and what so were you doing, doing before they plucked you up? What what, I, what I, was I, your day job? I, I, I didn't have a day job. I, I was I, I had a, a, a me and my wife had started a company, an education consultant okay. firm, and so uh, from there, it honestly because uh, the startup life, my first podcast started as a blog. I was writing a blog. Uh, and my wife said, why don't you just start a podcast? I mean, because you know, wives, they're the smartest, hey, the smarter half. Of you. Brother, right? yes, they are. Right. Yes, they right. are. So she's like, why don't you just start a podcast? And so the blog turned into the podcast, right? You know, and so yeah. we were uh, doing education consulting. We still have that company. Uh, but, you know, uh, but yeah, we were doing education consulting. Uh, my wife was the educator and I would just, you know, do the books, right? Make sure we're getting paid, stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, so yeah, that's what I was doing before this podcast game, you know, and that wow. was, uh, that was, uh, uh, almost seven years ago now. And so been in this game for seven years and that's, that's, that's where I am, man. That's where I am. That's what I was doing before. What a great story because, uh, for me, I fell into podcasting because my peers just wanted to just, you know, toss it around and talk shit, Bunch of brothers <laughs> want to sit around and talk shit. <laughs> right, and, uh, right. And hang out and drink and talk and, you know, play some cards and, you know, pool and whatever. Long story short, as you know, people fell off. And yeah. I'm sitting here, like, with me and my, my, my close friend, he's my co-partner now in the podcast. Mm -hmm. We're like, man, I like, I enjoy doing this. Like, I'm having a good time. <laughs> I don't want to stop. I know I didn't start it, you know. It wasn't my idea completely. But uh, I want to keep going. And we've been going ever since. So... I, my goal is to do what you're doing. I want to do this full time and uh, actually, because I'm in sales. I actually want to now assist the company and actually leave the sales role and gotcha. go into podcasting and producing and all that. So I'm going to pick your brain at times, man, and see how Please. I can get myself out here because uh, <laughs> I, ha I have the, the educational background for this. Now I'm like, oh, man, I got to put this together with my sales acumen. I believe I can do a little bit more. So. I'm, I'm proud of you, and that's that's awesome that you did that. And shout out to your wife. I did read that in your bio. You know, shout you got shout out to Mrs. Man. Because, man, listen, <laughs> whew, they deal with us, man. Man, let me let me just take just a moment to kind of shout out my wife because my go. wife was awesome on this journey. Because first of all, not only did she uh, suggest podcasting, it goes deeper than that. Uh, she, she, the, the studio that I have in my closet, she Ooh. built it by hand. Wow. She built it. You know what I mean? Because my wife, my, my wife's the Bob Vila of, in there the you go. right? That, that's her, right? So she built the studio and there was a, there was one time where I got sick. She stepped in, she did the show for me. You know what I mean? So the thing is, man, like, and that's why I love her, man. She's like, you know, uh, if this is what you want to do. Then this is what we're going to do. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and so yeah. she's been, she's been 100. In, in this game for a long time. So now I'm trying to make sure she go on all the trips, get That's all right. the hours, get, get all the whatever, right? Because like, you know, this, none of this happened. No awards, no medals, no, none of this happens without her, man. That's none right. None of this happens without her. I completely understand, so, man. Uh, yeah. shout, shout out to Mrs. <laughs> shout her out. Kendall, shout out. Right. Man, shout, and, and you out in Memphis. Are you from the Memphis area? Born and raised, That's man. Born and raised. Right. Yeah. Are you a Grizzlies fan? Man, got to be. I got to ask you, be. you know, they came from Vancouver, so that's I don't true. know, you know. But when they I came, you were like, "That's it. That's my squad." It, it's it's funny because like I, I've always because for the longest time Memphis didn't have like you know a professional team or one that kind of stayed around long enough, and so I you know I said like you know I'll have my teams in other cities and stuff like that, uh, but we ever get a team, then that's just it. And so I was a New York Knicks fan. Uh, oh, I, yeah, love the Knicks, man. You know Larry Johnson, Allen Houston. <laughs> 
uh, Chris Childs giving COVID a two piece, all that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, yes. I, I was a big fan of that that late '90s Knicks man. I loved them. Uh, yeah, but yeah. when when the Grizz came in 2001, man, I was like, I gotta let them go, man. Like this is home. It, you know, I, I, it, I, it wasn't that hard to let them go either. They weren't doing that great, <laughs> right? So, I mean, they started to fall off. You know, they, <laughs> they had that they had that run in '99, man, with Spreewell and yeah. stuff like that. They were yeah. they were pretty dope, man. But like then they kind of fell off and. They ain't really reclaimed it ever since. So, so I'm a, <laughs> I, a I used time. to be a Knicks fan. I'm a, actually down Bless in the heart. heart I'm a Knicks fan. Bless your heart. <laughs> I was raised. I was. I was raised in Brooklyn. So you know you yeah, had to love yeah. Patrick Ewing. You know what I mean. Oh, Being raised big in Brooklyn. Patrick Ewing fan. I, I, but, I, I was. I was rocking Patrick Ewing shoes here in Memphis, man. Like I had them, to do it myself. I had them, the all white ones with the strap. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly the the white the, the the white black thirty threes man. Yep, I remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, shout out to Patrick Ewing, man. What a dude, sure. man. Unfortunately, you never got that ring, bro. Yeah, yeah. Never got got that <laughs> ring. Well, I listened to your podcast and I, and I listened to uh, the most recent one. Okay. And the story of the gentleman in the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and how? Well, no, not the French Revolution. Sorry, the French military was with him. French was uh. Yeah, yeah, he was attached to the French military. French World military. War. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. No, it's all and good. I was like, well, then I listened to how you explained. I got that. That was a great idea how you introduced your podcast to people and they could listen to learn what it's all about. Right. And how you wonder, they, 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 you said they're running out of stories in Hollywood. And you're like, okay, if you're out of stories, how can, and I couldn't believe that they somebody would even have said that because I know there's yeah. so many stories to hear. What's your favorite story so far? Whew. That that's that's rough, man. Because like we've got because we kind of hit a mini milestone with Black in America. There's ten episodes now, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and one of the things people get on me about: how come there's not more episodes? How come there's not no more episodes? That is because it takes two to three weeks to do one episode. Easy. Like, it's like it, it takes two to three weeks, and, and and that's just the the actual production. Of yeah. This not even counting the research, yeah. right? This not even counting the research. But who, Santa man, that that's a hard one because they're they're all my babies. They're all okay. my babies. Like because it's easy to say right now that like, like um, I, I'll say it this way: my fa favorite right now is the one that just released, <laughs> right? Henry okay. Johnson, this and the other. But the the OG is the first one. When I read the story of John Fox. And yeah. what he did, I was like, I got to tell this story. Mm -hmm. I, I have to tell this story. You know, then that producer said what he said, like, all the stories is going to be told in Hollywood has been told. Like, no, 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 no. I ain't never heard of John Fox. What he did, it was like absolutely phenomenal. We got to tell this story. Yeah. We got to tell this story. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it was just like, I have to do this. And from there, it just kind of blossomed. You know what I mean? And so we, we and we tell stories sometimes from people that you may have heard of, but we try to find stuff that maybe you haven't heard about them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like Marion Anderson and and Wendell Scott, like I didn't even know we had black NASCAR drivers. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you know, and, and, and that you know, I mean, we have now like Bubba Wallace and a few others that came, you know, uh Bill Lester, people like that. But like in in the 60s and 70s I, I didn't know that yeah and so it was just kind of a fun story to tell but I, like i said right now my favorite is henry johnson but the og the one that kicked all of this off was john fox that very first episode okay yeah okay i i, I understand how you feel because someone <laughs> I, I mean like i have a. we i think we're over we have 100 episodes but i you know not everything is out there right. and and someone asked me recently what was my favorite and i was i was saying i gotta ask people this question I always feel like it's the newest one yeah. because I've, I've, I've learned <laughs> so much and I appreciate you watching the, the, the latest one. Was it with uh, PBE Pluto? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That when I, by the time I got there now, all, as you know, when you edit and you learn how to do music and Foley and you, you do all, and then I have so many new programs in my final cut now right. <laughs> that when I put it on, I'm like, Oh wow, this is actually really smooth. So I always like the newest one. I can't say that my first one is my favorite because I hate looking at myself going, what was I doing? I'm, I look so nervous, but I've gotten into my groove. So I completely understand what, what you're saying, like the first one and the most recent one. I feel the same way, you know, man, as well. Man, 
Man, listen, the, the, the first episode of the Startup Life podcast, which, and, and that podcast had has over 320 episodes, right? Wow. Like, that was my first baby, like, wow. you know, uh, you know, but when I go back and listen to that first one, it was trash, bro. It was trash. <laughs> like, it was, it was, let's call it a baby. It was trash. It was bad. It took, real, real talk, Santi, it took me six hours to record a 30-minute podcast. Like, wow. it, like, I kept flubbing and. You know, there and the thing is, like here in Memphis, I don't know if you know this or not, but like FedEx is the world headquarters here in Memphis, okay. right? And, okay. and so, like, we live right in the flight path of FedEx. This so, is like every other, like, in the, it's like in the middle of the night, like every other minute, there's a plane flying and stuff like that. So, just crazy. But yeah, that that first episode was is bad. It's bad. <laughs> 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 It's just bad, man. I, I I know how you feel. I know how you feel, man. I completely get it. I completely get it. <laughs> it's just it's, it's it is what it is. But the thing is, though, like, but I still go back and listen to it. Yeah, because yeah. One, yeah. One, one of the things that I, I I go back and do uh and go back to listen to that episode and go back to like what like look at like Facebook memories and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you know what I, I go and look at that dude and I say thank you, thank you, bro. Because had you not, you know, battled that fear or whatever, we wouldn't be where we are right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, yeah. there is no trophy. There's no South by Southwest. There's none of that. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it's just, um, you know, I, so I go back and listen often just to, even if it's just to humble myself, because I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the stuff, man. You know, I'm the greatest of all time. And then you go look at that. Nah, I need work. I got to go do some work. Nah, that's, that's not, nah, you, you came a long way, but nah, you, you, you got you had more work to do, so yeah. So sometimes I go and let's do it to humble myself. You, got, you have to because you don't want to get you know you don't you don't want to fall and right. it, and you fall and go. That's because you were you were doing this. You know you were right. behaving this way. So right. I completely understand that. So you do you should because if you don't do it, you know something else going to do it. Let me man, tell you. <laughs> man, if it ain't me, it'll be my wife. You, like, you know you're not as dope as you think you are, right? You know so there you <laughs> go. There you yeah, go. Man, <laughs> so. With the stories you're telling, do you see yes. yourself probably ever, I mean, I, you said South by Southwest, mm -hmm. I can only imagine Hollywood and maybe some storytelling is knocking at your door by now. Is, is that happening? So uh, so he, people are reaching out. I'll, I'll just say that. People are reaching out. People are loving the style of storytelling. You know, a good friend of mine, Rolandis Rogers, a uh, really good friend of mine, uh, he, 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 he summed up my show best. He's like, man, I don't think I've ever heard a show that, that blended history, storytelling, and the culture. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever heard that before. I was like, damn, damn, I didn't actually came up with that. But no, man, like, people are starting to reach out, you know, not not Hollywood types, but the thing is, you know, with podcasting in the business space, people, uh, the business space, people are, are starting to understand the power yeah. of podcasting and, and marketing and stuff like that. Uh, and, and the fact that, you know, what really uh, made those phone calls start coming to uh, pass uh, was that when we start winning awards, not just in history, but in another genre. So my, my podcast that I do for work also has awards as well. And so now you get to see the range that the kid got, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. and so, so, so people are calling, you know, nothing that's like, you know, like ready to jump ship or anything like that. And, it, and it's not even a money thing. It's a situation where it's like, you know, uh, you know, the situation just isn't right, you know, I'm because saying. sometimes when you, when when Hollywood and stuff like that come calling, man, they want you to switch stuff up. Yeah, they do. And they say they, they want you to like appeal to a different audience, but you start to lose yeah. uh, when you do that. You know, you start to lose the soul of what yeah. got us here in the first place. Yeah. So it, it, it's nothing situation like that. But pe people are noticing; they're taking notice, and, and there's a few phone calls, few emails that's been placed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, re the reason I bring it up, like you know, when I listened to it, I felt like I was watching. It, 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 I'm, I'm driving in my vehicle, and I'm listening to it. And I'm like, I'm watching a movie. I feel like this is a movie. <laughs> the way you got the the guns shooting off, and they're coming in the they're coming from the woods, and they shoot into the dark, and and then you gave the, the backstory how I even ended up there, and I'm like, wow, this this I'm like I could watch this. This is like Birth of a Nation. <laughs> I feel like, and and I love how you'll cut away, and then you'll give us, you know your take on it and then you bring up the racism because i'll tell you what happened with me with listening to okay. it okay and it was my first time starting to listen to your podcast i've never heard anything like this before okay i was so uplifted by how positive and how strong this brother was but then he had to go home and then when he went home i was like damn 
it, it, it just brought that right now. So is that something that you try to implement? Like, okay, look how well he did, but look at how he's faced and treated once he gets home. Is Absolutely. that something you try to play to Absolutely. Okay. Yes, because one of the biggest tools in a podcaster's toolkit that I, I, I believe Mm -hmm. doesn't get uh used enough is juxtaposition mm -hmm. is it's, it's putting his valor his courage his ferocity uh on display and then coming back and being treated like less than you know uh, subspecies mm -hmm. uh you know not not deemed a full human mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh and, and so like it it is it, it, to purposely show uh that disrespect and that fall and a fall that's not no uh by no means any fault of henry johnson uh mm -hmm. but it, it's just a situation like we have to highlight how important he was but also how he was treated mm -hmm. and, and so we have to remember those stories uh and, and so that's important so juxtaposition is definitely one of the uh the biggest tools in my toolkit to highlight that so that way you can see that duality mm -hmm. of what's going on with with either a, a Henry Johnson or a Wendell Scott, because I tell people all the time, like, look, this show is not to bash white people. That's not what this is, you, right? You say it on the show. Yeah, I heard you say it on the show. This, I like that's that. not what this is. And, and while racism is a a, 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 um, a constant theme, it's not a central mm. theme, right? It's mm. one of the things. The central theme is, you know, just like the episode comes on, we come from innovators, heroes, mm. and royalty. You know what I mean? It's, mm. it's to show that that is to give the listener affirmation that like while we have endured uh adversity while we have endured all this stuff in spite of all of that mm -hmm. we have done these amazing things you know what i mean and so that's why i re refer to them as uncle henry uncle wendell mm -hmm. the ancestors if you will because mm -hmm. like you know you come from a strong lineage and mm -hmm. that's what i want you to feel in every single episode so no that, that i'm glad you pointed that out because that that's that's intentional to okay. do that very intentional great 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 yeah i i enjoy i enjoyed myself i was really into it you you, you got a listener out of me and i'm going to share <laughs> it crazily because i'm like this is something that the youth need to hear because it's not being taught at schools and uh had, had I, you had you heard of henry johnson before you know i i have heard the name okay you know you know okay. you so I'm conspiracy theorist, <laughs> man. <laughs> if there's a conspiracy theory out there, I'm reading about it, you know. And I even question that, you know. I'm that guy. So uh, I know I've heard it in passing because I, 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 I've heard this briefly. I've heard the name, but I never knew what the story was all hey, about because hey, I know hey, Obama, right. you know. Right. Oh, there was as, a lot as, you, as, as you went on in your story, mm -hmm. and you finally gave him all all the flowers he was getting, which still is not enough. And and and. and 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 that's the thing right like because one of the things that let me let me back up here mm -hmm. so when we learn black history and yes. this is not a knock on historians mm -hmm. this is not a knock on people who tell these stories we hear the story of struggle mm -hmm. we hear the story of you know overcoming we hear the story of fighting for civil rights and let me be clear those stories 100 percent have to be told mm -hmm. They have to be told. However, I think there's stories like the ones that we're trying to present that show that, like, in spite of all of that, these are some of the things that we've done. So that way, you know, you can feel as if if, if you're a, a little black boy in North Carolina, you can feel like, okay, maybe I can become a NASCAR driver. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was a thing. I didn't realize we were out here in these NASCAR streets. But mm -hmm. maybe I can do that too. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I can be... Uh, a, a soldier and serve proudly and get the Medal of Honor because you didn't know. Santi, you may not know this, but there are 95 African Americans who have won the Medal of Honor. Mm. Not, not many. No, I, I, I did know not this. know that. There's I did about not. 90, I think about 90, 95 people who, who look like us mm. who have won the Medal of Honor. And there's at least one person who won it twice. Wow. Right? And, and the thing is, wow. when you think about the Medal of Honor, normally you're not there to accept it. Because you've mm. done something so so crazy uh, that you know you, you didn't you didn't survive what you did you, you yeah. didn't survive it you know what I mean but you know when we tell these stories we make it a point to say look we want to affirm you 
you know and, and so when you was listening to car i hope you felt affirmed oh yeah because that, that that that's the goal yeah you know what i mean and so i think sometimes while we do need to tell those other stories about civil rights struggle uh you know the lynchings bombing stuff like that we emmett till stuff like that mm -hmm. i'm not knocking those stories that's just not my that's just not my ministry yeah. my ministry is to show that like hey in spite of all that we've done some dope stuff like we've that, done some real dope i want to thank you for that because i i tell people all the time i don't watch and you know maybe we'll give it 100 here i don't watch slave movies i'm like i don't watch them i can't do it however if you got a jangle style to it or birth of a nation i'm all in i understand it's going to be hard in the beginning but you got to show me some success at the end right you know i, I need i need to get that affirmation we, we need to see ourselves on the screen as the hero as yeah. the person wearing the, 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 the big hat and stuff like that we need to see that and so you know while i do that in audio form i want you to feel that i want you to feel affirmed i want you to feel like you come from a people who have done these amazing things. And that's why we give that background information. Uh, that's why we give that detailed information because not only do I want you to understand that you come from these people, I want you to feel invested. That's because right. That's why we, you know, because that's why I want you to learn about John Fox's wife. That's why I want you to learn about Wendell Scott as a kid, you know, up and down the streets of Danville on his bike. I want you to feel invested in those people. So that way in the end, you're rooting for them. Because at yeah. the end of the episode, you, you, you find yourself Come on, Henry. Come on, bro. Yeah, Come yeah. On, bro. Right? Yeah, know, yeah. So yeah. That, that's what I'm trying to invoke in those stories. Man, that story was so wild. <laughs> that story was so wild. I was like, someone did this. And then the ending was just so tragic, though. You know, the, yeah. in his 30s, you know, losing yeah. this guy. Right. And to alcoholism. And, you know, I can only imagine all he had to go to PTSD Absolutely. and everything. It was just, Absolutely. It, it, was, it was crazy. It's now a little before 11 a.m. And Soma Colonia is completely overrun. Lieutenant Fox can hear the Germans and their small arms fire all below him. He reports the Germans were in the streets and attacking in strength. Some of the forces have started to retreat, but he decides, along with a few others, to stay behind, calling more artillery fire. <laughs> 